And now we're actually going to append the eyes to our caterpillar's head. So we open up that file which uh, we got up to which was caterpillar2.blend. Go File and Append. And what we're looking for is that file we created which was the I2. Go to the object. Oh no, go on I. I blend file which was the one that I created. Could have been I2. Go to the object section and then there's the file called I. Right click and then come across and do load library and that's loaded in that object. Always go to the object section when you're appending, when you're looking for objects, not surprisingly. S to scale it down and we can use our translate widget to drag it into position basically getting it into the eye socket and see how it looks. Now we're actually going to um, do various things with this and set up textures and what have you on the, uh, the skin of the um, caterpillar but we'll do other things with the eyes later on so don't worry about you know how they how they're animated or whatever we'll cover that later. We're just really getting the size and the position right. Making sure they fit in case we need to do anything else to the head model. I mean, a lot of this is personal taste as to how you want, whether you want to have big bug eyes or smaller eyes or whatever. It's how you design it. And that's looking about right. Now we'll get the other eye in, so you do Shift D to duplicate and then Escape because we don't want it to be in grab mode. And then we can easily use then the translate widget to move it across into position and for the other eye. He's starting to look like a person, admittedly a somewhat strange looking person. Okay, the control up arrow again to take to our normal viewport view. And I'm going to save it over at the moment, so it's just control W to save over the existing file name. Now what we're going to do is to, when you want things to, we're going to actually parent. So you actually select the um, head first of all, sorry, select the eye first of all, then select the head, and then make it the parent. Remember that's that's sometimes confusing, but you're making the um, you're making the head to be the parent of the eye. So when you grab the head, the eyes will follow around. We will be unparenting or or de deparenting that, whatever the phrase is later on but it's just for the moment for convenience so if you wanted to you can rotate the head round and um, get a better view of it. Uh, do a quick render although of course we haven't got any material set up on the caterpillar's skin or on his head at the moment which we will soon correct. Now the type of texture that I want to put on this is called a ramp shader and what that is is that if you imagine um, a peach or some particular surfaces, different surfaces, they have uh, as light reflects off a, an angled part of the surface it reflects a slightly different colour to when it reflects on a more direct part of the surface. Now if you imagine insects they look almost iridescent sometimes they're the, um, almost prismatic, they reflect different colours back and that's the kind of effect that I want to get. So you click on, click on um, color ramp on the material section here and I'm going to choose um, a purpley color because I've clicked add there and added in another section in the center you just, if you see that slider here that's got there by clicking add um, I did that quite quickly I should have done it slower you did click add and we add in basically another um, section in the center so we can set different colors. Now if we render it you can see the colors that I've set and how it kind of looks the way that um, the surface, the skin of some insects look or in this case our caterpillar. Kind of weird, kind of interesting. <laughs> but play around with the ramp shaders because they more subtle use creates skin tones which is the way that it's used a lot of the time. Now we're adding a texture by clicking on the texture icon using the Stucky texture reduce the size down. We're going to use this to create some surface speckling, some surface mapping, or rather bump mapping as it's called, because it's just the way the light looks. Now the colour there needs to be 
<coughs> change oh, you don't have to use color but we are color is selected we're also going to select normal which that then emulates light reflecting on the textured surface you see the preview so it is affecting the color so you get some color in the ridges additional color in the ridges and also you probably can't see it terribly clear in on that small view but it's put a surface texture on the model so it'll look like um, slightly bumpy texture a bigger render shows it a bit better like that